It's time for us to get into the news review segment this morning. And uh, we're going to be talking about, you know, of course, they, we can't, we can't uh, let go of the MPP Superdelegates Conference just yet because uh, it's still making their rounds. And then a few other stories as well, important issues to discuss this morning. I've been joined in the studio um, by uh, Elvis Daco, who is the editor of the Finder newspaper, as well as uh, Larry Alans Dugbe, who is the editor of the Herald newspaper. Gentlemen, you're welcome. Thank you. How are you doing? I was Grace. Yeah, I'm usually a very quiet person. It's our home, usually. Yeah. <laughs> Those who don't know. <laughs> All right, so we want to begin with um, the fallout of the MPP um, Super Delegates Conference. Uh, there's going to be a runoff. Well, we, we, we are looking forward to what the decision will be eventually, but um, it looks like there's going to be a runoff now. One of the questions that I have for you, and I don't know what you, what you make of it, but, you know, going into the election itself, um, the conference, it, a lot of people were expecting Alan to do better than he did. Um, I don't know if you were also expecting that to happen. Um, but now a lot of the... Um, his team uh, saying that, well, listen, we wanted top five. We are in top five, you know. But is, ju is that enough of a, a justification, as it were, for his quote unquote poor showing, you know, um, looking at the numbers? Baumia swept so many numbers, that, and then we thought, okay, okay, maybe Alan should come in second. But no, he didn't. Mm. Okay, I don't know what you make of it. Let me start with you, Larry. Uh, <clears throat> good morning to our viewers and uh, good morning to you as well. Uh, frankly speaking, uh, Alan's uh, numbers were total um, um, it's shock to me, <laughs> let me put it that way for want of a better word. Because uh, the initial thing was that Alan was even going to, to beat Baumia. Mm. Okay, mm. I mean, from the narrative, yeah. you know, from his uh, team members, they had said that over their dead body will Baumia, <laughs> you know, overtake <laughs> Alan. More because then uh, Alan has been in this space for a, a very long time, mm. since uh, 20, 207. Okay, wow. and so he was going to place better, yeah. do better than Baumia. And even said that, oh, most of the MPs who were. Uh, uh, supportive of uh, Baumia or had come out to declare for Baumia mm. were doing so because they didn't want to offend what they call the establishment. Okay. These are their words. Mm. So on the day, Alan was going to, by the end of the voting, Alan was going to do better, was yeah. going to beat Baumia hands down. <laughs> Even <laughs> talked about how we shouldn't, you know, be carried away by the polls that mm. had come out. Now, for the numbers to come out and this is what mm. you know came up and it's it's everybody it's surprised that even Kennedy Japan mm. with all his you know with all his patapa <laughs> let me be blunt with you <laughs> you know could uh, could pull more numbers than Baumia mm. I mean, sorry, than uh, Alan, Alan yeah. and placed second above Alan mm. was just too embarrassing for everyone. But from where uh, I sit, and uh, some people that we've spoken to, as far as uh, the, uh, this whole contest was concerned, yeah. we picked up signal long ago, I mean, as in the Herald, that Alan is not that well placed in the party. Really? Yes. He's not that well placed in the party. Because their, comment, their comments were that Alan, after every election, mm. after every, let's say, flag bearer contest, mm, mm. he goes away. Okay. Until the next contest when he pops up. So instead of, so instead of saying 
um, 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 concretizing his gains yeah. after one election and growing his popularity Base, yeah, further, yeah. he rather re 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 recoils, exactly. reclines, yeah, they, they and reclines, just, exactly. you know, yes. and then, I see. Sure. And then off he goes. And so the next contest when he pops up again. Mm. And so he doesn't, he's unable to maintain, uh, you know, a solid grip over his support base. And also, he's able to grow upon it mm. such that, you know, he could use it in the next election yeah. where his numbers, you know, uh, will go up. Now, they cited how Akufuado, since 2007, he's been increasing in votes mm. as far as the party mm. is concerned. Mm. Okay, to a point where the man controls a lot of, you know, the, the, the party base. Yeah. He was hitting uh, 86, 90. In, 90 in certain instances. Mm. But in there is Alan who, you know, his main uh, contender yeah. kept coming down and down and down and down to a point where now Kennedy, even Kennedy DuPont is beating him. <laughs> you, you, yeah. you, you get it. Yeah. They talk also about how uh, uh, um, President Kufour left him a lot of, you know, structures mm. as far as the party is concerned. However, he hasn't been able to, let's say, keep hold of that, that structure mm. and, like I said, build up on mm. it. They also made mention that the most surprising thing about him was his human relations that people cited. Mm. That he's not easily approachable like that. Fine man from afar, he looks like, you know, somebody that you can easily yeah. approach him. Maybe they fear his stature. The man is in the air, and if you are down there, you, 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 would want, you, you wouldn't be able to approach him. So people have difficulty mm. approaching him. Mm. Warming up to people, also they feel that he doesn't warm up to people easily. Mm. The last but not the least, which is that his um, hum, uh, human relations. Have I mentioned that? You mentioned that, okay. yeah. Uh, that he, um, um, oh, why has this escaped me? That he has a certain sense of entitlement. Okay. It's like it's mine. Yeah, yeah, He has a certain sense yeah, of I'm next. Yeah, 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 I'm next. Yeah. I don't yeah. use that. Maybe <laughs> it didn't happen much. Well, no, but he's also said a drum is so yeah. ah, Okay, it, so then he yeah. said that so that's the entitlement That is the yeah. entitlement mentality yeah. that people felt. So if you, a drew me so no, then you can't go further to even cultivate mm. relationships, mm. build upon those mm. relationships, mm. and then use it to, yeah. to, to your own yeah. ends. And yeah. so, and you had the likes of uh, 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 who, um, uh, let's say, people who had, who were disgruntled mm. as far as the party, you know, arrangements are concerned, party before, and then party in government now, mm. Mm. and the fact that they didn't get some government appointment mm. those who were appoint who had been appointed earlier in the first term couldn't make it in the second term yeah. and so they feel bitter i mean the most shocking thing is having uh, uh, is it not otiko uh, this other lady uh, uh, the one who was tourism minister yeah. uh, 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 if, exactly uh, 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 catherine uh, yes catherine telling you that listen there's nothing to defend Okay, as yeah. far as the Kufuado government is concerned, mm. there's nothing to defend. Catherine, you had been uh, uh, tourism a tourism minister. minister. Yeah. So yeah. are you, say, uh -huh. are you yeah. saying that your tenure mm. didn't achieve anything that you can even speak volumes yeah. about? Yeah. That is a self, you know, it's indicting indictment. statement. Wow. Again, then you had the man whom you were representing as mm. trade minister saying that you know something, I did well as far as the trade ministry is concerned. Mm. I did uh, one district, one factory. I did this, I did that, I did that. And you are saying that there's nothing to defend, to a, meaning that even Alan, who is your candidate, you can't defend his records at the ministry, <laughs> in, government. in government, exactly. <laughs> yeah. It, do you get it? Yeah. Hobson Adoye also had been on air talking about how the MPP uh, uh, parliamentarians, I mean, have been influenced with money to do the things that they were doing. Meaning, these are stomach politicians, mm. or you know, they are just fo following their stomach direction and so on. And these are people who would vote and would for Alan or you know, 
at the end of the day, yeah. they have constituents who they have a lot of influence over. And so you don't talk like that and expect that that will reflect in your numbers. Yeah. Well, now the narrative is changed too. We didn't even want to be first in the first place. <laughs> we didn't want to be second in the, in the, second, you know, in the first place. Even that, so all we wanted... We wanted to be top five. Uh -huh, we wanted to be top five. Mm. To a point where he's even telling you that, oh, even if... I had, if there was a tie between myself and somebody down there, mm. like the people who had 9-9. Nine, nine. Yeah. Okay. I Me, mean, I was just interested. I was even, I'm even ready to do uh, uh, <laughs> a runoff. A run -off. <laughs> so that I become part of the first five. Okay. The change in narrative. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I mean, we hadn't been here. We, <laughs> we just woke up, you know, to be hearing some of this funny stuff. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, well, um, it's, it's, but, I'm, I'm seeing something where it's likely that Alan might, you know, might beat uh, Kennedy. Really? Yeah, it's possible. But let's see how it works. Is it possible when you go to the larger numbers? Because, again, you hear, you hear things like um, Kennedy is a grassroots person. So if he can do this well at this level, who... Yes, of course, you can see that the MPs may show some loyalty to him because he's also a fellow MP. But essentially, he's a grassroots person. The grassroots may root for him even more so than Alan. Um, but now, Larry is suggesting that, and of course, there's talk around, that he be, Alan may do a, a, a better showing you know, on November 4th. I don't know what you make of it. <laughs> In politics. Yeah. It's about numbers. Yes. And if you don't build the numbers, no matter what you think, you will not get a position. Mm. As Larry rightly said, Alan has contested 207. Yeah. He had over 30 something percent at that time. If you check subsequent elections, his percentage have dropped drastically. Mm. Which should be a message that something is wrong with his strategy yeah. and need to be revamped. As to whether the strategy was revamped or not, I can't tell. But with what transpired, it's obvious that the trend continued, which will mean that either he does have a very strong and tactful strategy, or the strategy they have is not working, mm. and they are not reviewing it. Mm. And that is what the figures, in terms of the statistics, will tell yeah. you. So it's, it's, it's something people, as for the development can decided that he's going to enter the race. I said it, that Ken could easily beat Alan. And so I'm not surprised that he did beat him. Mm. You see, when you are campaigning, you want to lead a party internally. Every party has structures from top to down. Yeah. From down all the way to the top, for the leadership of the party, everyone from the police station coordinators all the way to the president, everybody go to some form of election. The MPs have to go through primaries in the party before they become candidates to represent the party. The coordinators do the regional uh, consultations. All of them go to some form of election. They winning all this election shows you that they are in tune with the people who cast the vote. Yeah. So if you are going to an election, first thing I look at, who are those backing you? Those backing you in the party. Do they have influence mm. with the people the who really yeah. will vote? When you, you know that those who are backing you have influence, then you know that you are safe. And that is the problem Alan is facing. Those that are backing him, those who are like his campaign member, those who are like declaring support, him, clearly if you look within the NPP as a party, those people do not seem to be holding any significant control of people in the party or mm. have any good constituency mm. in the party. Mm. Therefore, you ask yourself, who is going to look up to those people and vote for you? Mm. And so long as you can't point to that, know that your campaign is in trouble. Mm. And that is what has happened to the Alan campaign. And that is why Alan campaign needs to be careful. 
they were all over the place that they were going to beat Bahamian in, in this uh, election. They, they, didn't, they didn't say that November for the day. Even this one, they are going to win. Yeah. <laughs> so if you say this one are going to win, you perform so badly, now you are changing the narrative. Yeah. What it means that you are not even accepting the reality yeah, that yeah. of what's what happening. has happened what's to you. Happened. So you, yeah. that you may face a similar fate yeah. on November 4th. Uh, if you admit yeah. that your expectations have not been met, yeah. then it means you are ready to review your strategies yeah. and begin to look at what has gone wrong. Yeah. But if you come up publicly telling me that, oh, you just want to be uh, with the uh, fight mm. and that and that, which is not what you were saying before, before. the vote was cast, yeah. then it means that you are not accepting the reality. Yeah. And then you live in that mindset and you may have even a serious problem mm. in the November 4th. Mm. So I think that for the Alan campaign, if they are telling us the public that, I hope that inside that will not be mentality. Yeah. If they want to do anything meaningful on November 4th, then that mentality has to change. They have to admit within themselves that, look, we have not performed. Mm. Is there anything we can do in the next two months to be able to perform? Mm. That is the first thing they have to do. So for me, I think that narrative they are putting out there is not helpful to them at all because it is not an acceptance of reality. Yeah. Ken Pong, I have said it, that, you see, Ken has ambition to become president for because, you see, what he has done so far, Everything he's done for the party, he put it out in the public for the party members to know that mm. I am doing a lot for the party. Yeah. And therefore, the day he stands election, definitely, people will recall that, ah, at this point, it was Ken who did this for the party. Yeah. At this point, it's Ken who did this for the party. That is number one. Number two, he's the one that is willing and ready to take on the party leadership yeah. and say that he's doing it on behalf of the grassroots. The grassroots yeah. So he's executed a strategy for about the past 10 years mm. to make a point that I am for the downtrodden in the party. Yeah. I'm not with the big people. Yeah. So these two narratives that he's actually rolled out for so many years now has really gotten up to some party members yeah. to believe that if there's anybody in the party who doesn't care about us, those down there, mm. it is Ken. So for Ken, that is to his advantage. No matter who Ken is somebody who has also openly, consistently said, that even though they are government, yeah. government should find a way of empowering members and, and members of parliament mm. and other members of the party by finding a way of giving them contracts to execute so that they can have money to finance their campaign. Yeah. So in effect, he's saying that the members of parliament and other people in the party deserve contracts from government mm. to be able to make some profit so that they can financially be stable. Just, just, so just pe like, pe like people like that <laughs> see Ken as somebody who will be advocating <laughs> yeah. for them. So Ken has positioned himself that he will be the people's man. Mm. The vote, to me, is not surprising because as all that Ken has done, I expected that he will get some response. And yeah. for me, the result shows that those messages have actually played out well for him. Mm. And that if November 4th, if Ken even get 30% of all the votes mm. Mm, in November 4th, Ken will become the strongest candidate in 2024 for MPP, mm. obviously. So for Alan campaign to be thinking of beating Ken, point is, in the past six years, when have you heard publicly that Alan has done this for the party or that or that or that? Mm. What okay. is Alan's engagement with the public in terms of the past six years? Mm. Even as a minister, he was virtually like silent. You, you hardly read headlines about Alan in the media space. Mm. We may be focused on the job, that I'm doing the job. But the public needs to also know that you are doing the job. So for the past, he says, he has not helped himself by being that quiet type where you hardly read anything. In the past six years, I've not read that end of the year, Alan has gone to do a donation to an orphanage, mm. or has done this, or has met this religious group, or has met this interest group to discuss any issue. Yeah. All of a sudden, he wants to become presidential candidate. The question is, what kind of relationship have you built with people that you want to now rely on to be able to, for them to vote for you? So for me, I think that he has, uh, he's, he, he, he's a fine gentleman. Mm. He qualifies to become presidential candidate, but to get it, it's my take strategy. And it appears that he really has not been able to add on to the numbers since 20, uh, 207. Mm. And this result shows that clearly he's, he's actually lost he's a lot of people. Wrong. But if you look at Alan, even the key people, mm who supported Alan against Akufuado. Mm. MPP came to power. They said the party is all of us. They gave some of these guys appointment. 
Today, key supporters of Ireland are in the Baumia camp. Yeah. How come that key people who are supporting maybe eight years ago, four years ago, mm. are now in the camp of Baumia? It meant that there is some uh, there's some delink yeah. between you and the people yeah. that made them to go enjoy the Baumia camp. Yeah. And it tells you clearly that Baumia has done a good strategy by identifying people he feel that have influence, influence in the party yeah. and brought them on board yeah. to his side. Yeah. But it appears Allah was not able to do that, to identify those influential people yeah. to, to come to his side. Yeah. The Ashanti region argument, they yeah. only made the Ashanti region. I said, if you understand, you will never say that you can get, you are the best candidate because you can win Ashanti. Mm. Because if you take the Ashanti MPs, how many of them are backing you? Mm. The MPs are the ones who work with the people at the grassroots Baumia for an election. Baumia won 82% okay. of Ashanti. Yes, so the 82. people... Who work with the grassroots That's and the coordinators yeah. for elections yeah. are, the, are the members of parliament. Yes. So if you want to lay claim to Ashanti region, you should be laying claim that maybe 50 percent, 60 percent of the MPs from the region are on my side. Yeah. But here is the case: almost 90 percent of uh, those MPs have rather yes. declared for Baumia. Yeah. So it is obvious that even at the party's strong rule, rule, uh, rule hold, where the party can say, "What well, we say, MPP strong with Ashanti." Alan is not even in control of that place because yeah. the people who deal with the people at the grassroots to do all the work for the party mm -hmm. in the election, mm -hmm. they are saying we are with Bahumia. So when he made that comment, I said, look, it may be a good campaign message you want to say, but if you analyze it critically mm -hmm. and ask who are the people who are going to do the work for you in Ashanti region, yeah. the MPs are the ones who will do the work for you. These MPs are not backing your candidature. Yeah. So then why is the guarantee that you are going to get that vote if the MPs are not backing? So I was surprised that Bahumia won't have it in Ashanti. So clearly, I hope that the Alan campaign has listened to the suggestion and the criticism of people, and they will take all the positive ones, sit down, do a critique of themselves. Mm. And in management, what they have studied is that those who took the decision, if you want them to review it, you won't get anything better, because they want to defend their decision. Yeah. So maybe Alan will be considering an alternative group outside the people who are working for him, present all the issues to them and say, this is what people are saying about my campaign, why I didn't perform. Mm -hmm. I want you as an external group to do the analysis and give me a report. Yeah. But if you want to re depend on the very people yeah. who have done the work and with this abysmal performance, <laughs> they will come back with a mindset to defend because they will not want to accept yeah, yeah. failure. Yeah, yeah. And they will come and defend and say we are on course. Mm -hmm. The truth of the matter is that you are not on course. Yeah. But if you want to be on course, you have to identify why you are not on course. And those who took those decisions, can never openly come and tell you that we failed mm. or our strategy did not work. Sometimes it's not failure. It's about you think this strategy will work, yeah. but it did not work. Probably you don't have an alternative strategy, so you keep sticking to that strategy. Mm. But if you look for an external group and give them that mandate, that maybe in a week or two or a month, give me a report why my campaign strategy has not worked and give me... So what I need to do. Probably in the next one month, yeah. his messaging will change, okay. his approach will change. Okay. Almost every day, then maybe it could also now begin to change the mindset of even some influential people in the party to say, mm, the man is changing, yeah. and I think that maybe we have to consider him. Yeah. So he, he needs to do something drastically within a week or two. I'll tell you someone that if I were Alan, I'll quickly put, look for a, 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 a reputable poll company, mm. give them all the resources, and the next two weeks, go to all Ghana, all constituencies, do a poll in two weeks and give them the results. Mm. And let me know why I didn't perform mm. and what I need to do. Yeah. So that in the remaining six weeks before November 4th, you, you begin to change your narrative. Mm. You may not win, but then you could now garner a certain yeah. number that will show that you have changed narrative and you are not and coming out. You are, that's the point. Yeah. But if you go and perform abysmally in on November 4th, <laughs> yeah. that could be the, the, the end. Because then yeah. Ken, as the Ken, will then become like the next option yeah. aside by Omiya. Yeah. And uh, that, then that could really harm him. So I think this narrative of we just want to be in the fight, it is a refusal to accept the reality. Mm. If you are said, oh, we didn't know what went wrong. We did our best. Yeah. We thought that we made this, but it didn't happen. Maybe something where we are going back to the people to find out what we didn't do well. Then you are actually accepting that something has gone wrong. Yeah. But for you to say we just want to be uh, among the fire. When before the election you said you are beating Baumia hands, hands down. down. And then now you come and say that you are not accepting that.
Your strategy so, has not worked. So I want us to talk about um, the, the the runoff in terms of the don't waste your time. The, there is not. Is it? 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 The person who people are chopping last, Out, eh, you, the fifth position. Yeah. You want to go and spend resources the whole Ghana. Yeah. People who have eight people, they have eight people in all. They have eight people in all. Eight out of nine hundred fifty five votes. Yes. And you want to go and see? You you cannot be yeah. more democratic. Democratic. This thing you should have said. The only place you do a runoff yeah. is the first position. Yes. If you can't determine. Yes. But if it's not first position, any other place that's a tie, you yeah. ballot. I, I, you I, do you do balloting. Whoever picks. Comes first and followed by the other one. It, it would have been simpler. Yeah. I, I don't know how what went into this for them to go and write this yeah. thing. This should be their first and last of writing something like this. They should have the first right. position. Yeah. What do you think about this whole run of ah. the two, the, 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 those, the five and six positions? No. <laughs> so, they are, you know, they are looking for the last person. You know, they want to go they are, and. They are the apostles of democracy. <laughs> no, <laughs> they, they've always said that. They believe in rule of law. Ah. They, yeah. they, 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 they. I mean, you know, sometimes uh, you can you can put some garments on that, yeah, you know, yeah. even though it's very uncomfortable, you've just hung yourself. Mm. This whole thing about doing super delegates, this, you know, like we are playing an African Cup of Nations <laughs> where you are playing qualifiers, mm. and then after that you go and yeah. do all that. They are just time wasting, if you ask me. Resources, a drain on your resources. Yeah. And then also at the party level, party leaders are going to have to structure, you know, their you know, programs and so on and so forth. Now, I mean, you don't take that tie for granted. Mm. You get it. Because then you have to do a runoff. Yeah. Now, the runoff between who and who, are, are you going to have the people who voted for Baumia, Alan, Ken, and then those... You know, those who didn't vote for uh, uh, the others yeah. now deciding on the fate of these two people. Yeah. They may not have more votes than they, they may have more so votes yeah. than they, 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 <laughs> <laughs> you get it. So there it will end up that either yeah. uh, uh, die anymore, and then we'll have more votes than, more votes than, than Baumia. No, 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 uh, no, 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 so, so, so the runoff is just the two, yes, who are going to be in the runoff, yes. yes. So it will be just a, it, it will be a split of whoever comes first at yeah. the end of the day. Exactly. You know, we'll come and we'll go and join. But it's not only the 18 people who voted for them who are going to vote. No. It is still the 955 yes. yes. who are going to be lined up. This is the point. This is the point. Exactly. So if yeah. they finish yeah. it, that the animal gets 700, it still had more votes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the animal should come there. Yes. yes. <laughs> because, because apart from the 18, the rest of them didn't want them in the first place. Yeah. Exactly. So we're asking them to go and choose one. You see the difficulty? So, you, 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 I mean, Guys. apostles of democracy. <laughs> so, so and so and so. Believers of rule of law. This and that and that. You end up having a situation where, like, you know, yeah. uh, either a dynamo or a uh, Boajaku could now have more votes. Yeah. In, you know, so then you tell me that, oh, in the first round, yeah. I had nine. Yeah. In the second round, I had five hundred. <laughs> <laughs>